is uh, available for scrap were the wings. Now this particular aircraft was uh, scrapped out, but it's remained stayed up there at Oakey in Queensland until it's they were acquired for the by Jinx uh, to build all of the boomerangs that are currently flying. today by David Lowy, the uh, president and founder of the Tamora Aviation Museum. This is a Mark 8 aircraft, one of two operated by the Tamora Aviation Museum, also a Mark 16. This particular uh, colour scheme chosen for this machine is that of number 457 Squadron RAAF operating in the Pacific Theatre, flown by Bobby Gibbs. So these are the Yak-52 aircraft, uh, a little bit more dynamic than the Nanchangs, uh, plus seven to minus five. So Niall Higgins and Mark Willard returning. Niall again, pretty sure he must have liked what he saw when he passed last time and he's having another look. <laughs> ah, come on. So those aircraft have an inverted oil system, can stay inverted for about two minutes. I think you'd lose interest in about that time. I certainly wouldn't want to be flying from here to Melbourne. Now these are very affordable aircraft. at service with uh, number 723 Squadron Royal Australian Navy training helicopter pilots. Navy pilots were also sent to Vietnam to join with the 135th Assault Helicopter Company and they became what was known as an EMU, an experimental military unit. There were over 200 Navy personnel involved with uh, the EMU in four different groups that were set up there ending in 1971.
The A37 is powered by two J85 engines that combined develop about uh, 5,700 pounds of thrust. With the aircraft weighing about 6,200 pounds in this particular configuration, it has an incredible thrust to weight ratio. First aircraft designed by De Havilland Canada. Powered by a 210 horsepower Rolls Royce Continental IO360 engine. Steve Deeth, Peter Clements, Doug Hamilton and Guy Burke.
That's a big aircraft, Peter. Got a 104 feet wingspan, about 63 feet long, powered by two uh, Pratt & Whitney engines, radial engines. Looks rather ungainly. Uh, of course, it was an amphibious aircraft, land on water as well as land. And uh, the success of it, not very long range operations, but of course, pretty much uh, reduced speeds. See the, uh, there was an RAF shuttle in a shot down about uh, uh, in the Gulf of Thailand about uh, by the Japanese about 19 hours before Pearl Harbor. So uh, they, they were operated uh, by Aero Condor. The aircraft was acquired by Haas in uh, in 2002 and it was restored uh, back to airworthiness because it had been sitting in Ceea, Portugal for uh, quite a number of years, together with a couple of other um, uh, Catalinas from Aero Condor. The, uh, the aircraft was flown from Ceea to Arcachon in France. Uh, yeah, the, the F-A-18 Hornet to the, uh, to the earlier aircraft, so uh, a lot of different power settings, a lot of different flight limitations, so putting three, it all together. Three different generations of jet there as well. A lot of concentration, a lot of skill. Okay. The size of the uh, FA-18 compared to the other aircraft sort of dwarfs them all. It's a how, uh, how unique is that? Yes, Peter, many years ago when, uh, when David opened up the museum here, we, we certainly never thought we'd be seeing this, uh, certainly in, in 10 years from, from when we started. And considering today, like the first, the first display down here was uh, about 30 people and uh, three aeroplanes. I think the 30 people were all us just hanging around. There wasn't actually a crowd. Magnificent sight, ladies and gentlemen. basically as fast as you can turn the F-18 through 300. The uh, dirty degrees. pass as we call it from Liddy. You'll see the landing gear down. You'll also see the air-to-air -air refueling probe on the uh, right side of the nose and the tail hook at the back of the aeroplane there. That's right. It's not to say that it hasn't been done. That's exactly right. It basically flew down the main street just to uh, wave the flag. Here's the Liddy from the right now. officially will uh, start training on that next year over in the
and again the latest uh, technology in the Super Hornet. So it, it is uh, another step up from the Classic. Uh, it's not true fifth generation fighter, but it's fourth, four and a half, and uh, that is very, very capable platform as well.